About two or 3,000 years ago, some forgotten craftsman mounted a metal blade in a wooden block at a precise cutting angle and depth of cut. The hand plane was a game changer for woodworkers, just as it was in the 1800s when Leonard Bailey developed an all-metal plane that simplified the adjustments you must make. The Stanley Rule and Level Company hired Bailey, and the Stanley Bailey plane became a standard in the tool world. And we may be in the slow beginnings of third revolution in planesmanship. This is one of the first bench planes with easily interchangeable and disposable knives. It's been around for about 10 years and has been widely ignored by most traditional craftsmen because, well, because it's so different. However, the superior performance and convenience of these newer models may warrant a second look. Ow. Subscribers to the Workshop Companion know that I am not an influencer. I don't sell tools. Travis and I have had many opportunities to do so, but quite frankly, we've turned them all down because we don't like to do puff pieces. The only reason I'd agreed to do this review is primarily because a bench plane with interchangeable and disposable knives that you never have to sharpen is something I think you ought to know about especially those of you who are just getting into woodworking. And second, the people that asked me to do this agreed that I could say whatever I felt needed to be said. I want to be upfront with you. There is a little money riding on this. Travis and I were approached by the manufacturer's North American representative, and he agreed to pay us a little something if there is a bump in sales, which is great because Facebook and YouTube do not pay all the bills. However, I'm still going to tell you folks where these guys got it right and where they completely missed the boat. That said, this is the Rally Evolution, a bench plane manufactured by Samvaz Limited, a manufacturing concern in Switzerland. It's about the same size as a Stanley No. 4 smoothing plane and does much the same job. So that's what we're going to compare it to. I know I'm going to get messages asking about other planes that I might have used in this comparison. I chose the Stanley because for a century and a half it was the standard of the industry and it remains a capable and respected plane yet today. I also know that I'm going to get messages about resting the planes on their irons. Don't worry, this is our soft workbench. As you open the box, the first thing you notice is that the design is so industrial. And it is. The construction reflects 21st century manufacturing techniques, the same way Bailey's design was cutting edge 19th century. There are no castings. The body is made of steel plates, which have either been stamped or laminated and bolted together to make the plain body. And the steel is a corrosion resistance nickel steel alloy, so you don't have to worry much about rust. The knob and the toad are plastic and reasonably comfortable. Raleigh makes these planes in the English style with a knob in front and a tote in back, or the German style with the handle in the front. There are two models, expensive and not quite as expensive. The expensive model, the Evolution that you see here, has three adjustments, depth of cut, chip breaker position, and throat opening. The monoblock here looks similar, but only has an adjustable depth of cut. Planing with a hand plane is an iconic part of woodworking culture. Heck, some of us take selfies with our latest Stanley or Stanley Evolved plane. The smooth flowing lines of a Stanley Bailey plane might as well be etched into our very souls. To us, this is Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. And this is your local box store. Looks wise, in our culture, these things do not compare well. However, tools are meant to do stuff. So, for the rest of this review, let's talk about how this does what it does and how well it does it. And the how of it is pretty interesting. There is no frog, lever cap, lateral adjustment, none of the controls that we find on a Stanley. There is no plain iron as we know it. This has all been rethought. Instead, there is a knife holder that serves the same purpose as the chip breaker and the frog. The Raleigh folks call this assembly the backplate. 
This assembly holds the knife, which is extremely small compared to the plane iron you're used to. The holder and the knife rest against a bump in the plane body, and this sets the cutting angle. And this pivoting lockdown keeps them there, sort of functioning like a lever cap. A lever on the right-hand side it sets the depth of cut, and an eccentric roller that stretches between the sides adjusts the position of the chip breaker. There are a few other noteworthy differences. You've probably noticed that the tote is stenciled with a QR code. Get out your phone and read the code. You are immediately connected to the Raleigh website where you can order more irons or more planes. Which leads me to the instructions that came with this tool. There are a few pictures on the side of the box, but the folks who drew these hieroglyphics went to the IKEA School of Pictorial Communication and flunked out. I was in possession of this tool for two days before I discovered that the handle was hollow. The illustration that was supposed to show me that was labeled, set up the light. What light? The illustration that shows how to use the chip breaker says, set up the back plate, while the chip breaker itself is actually on top. And there is nothing at all to explain the bottle opener shape on the mouth adjustment tool. I thought it might be something to help turn the eccentric that positions the chip breaker in the back plate. It seems to fit there. When I asked the rally rep what this was, he said, it's a bottle opener. After a hard day's planing, I've always wanted to be able to use my hand plane to, to pop open a brew. It was explained to me that Riley's rationale behind such thin and incomplete instructions is that European craftsmen are insulted by instructions. I mean, what manufacturer would be so arrogant as to presume that I couldn't figure out that this was a bottle opener? Let me show you something. This is an instruction booklet that comes with a bench plane designed in Belgium. Apparently, the Belgian craftsmen aren't as touchy as those in the rest of Europe. Or the folks from Stanley Europe that published this may want to market their products globally. And they know that good information sells good tools, especially when you're marketing something unique like a plane with disposable blades. I can only hope that the rally folks wake up and smell the information because the lack of information may partially explain why their growth has been so slow in the U.S. and other places over the last decade. All right, I'll stop whining about instructions and I'll plane a little wood. And the first thing I wanted to show is how well this sucker works straight out of the box. So Travis and I took a little video of me doing just that. This was taken a couple months ago. I'm unpacking the Rally Evolution for the first time and making some test cuts. The depth of cut isn't just where I want it, so I make the adjustment and take a few more swipes. After a fairly short time, no more than five minutes, I'm planning thin shavings. And after just a little more futzing around, I was cutting curls between one thousandth and fifteen ten thousandths of an inch. That's a little less than .04 millimeters, or the thickness of a piece of paper. The plane works extremely well without all the traditional tuning and sharpening. It's a cinch to set up, even if you don't understand the instructions, and you can be planing in minutes, even if you're unaware that the handle is hollow. So, does it do as well as a more conventional plane? Well, I've set up a comparison so that you can see for yourself. This is a Stanley number no. 4 Type 19. Actually, it's in between a 19 and a 20, and it's one of the last Stanleys manufactured in America. It's got a freshly wetted hawk blade, just a little bit harder and a little bit thicker than a standard Stanley blade. This is about all I can do to soup up this Stanley. And this is a Raleigh with a brand new knife, and that's about all I can do to soup that up. The irons are two inches or 48 millimeters wide. The soles are dead flat, I've checked. And the depths of cut are similar. At the starting line, these are as close in capability as I can possibly make them. Gentlemen, start your planes. We're going to plane five wood species to see how the planes do in a variety of hardwoods, softwoods, and grain configurations. Let's get warmed up with spruce. First, the Stanley, and then the Raleigh. Moving up to Poplar, Stanley, 
and then the Raleigh. Curly Cherry, Stanley, and Rolfe. Quarter Sawn White Oak, Stanley, and Raleigh. And finally, Hard Rock Maple, Stanley, and Raleigh. Now, I've planed each of these surfaces five or six times going in both directions to make sure that I was getting consistent results. And I can honestly say there isn't much difference between the two planes in the effort that it takes to use them. The wood surfaces, however, tell a slightly different story. For each pair of samples, the Raleigh will be on your right and the Stanley will be on your left. Now, as you can see, all of the surfaces are acceptably smooth. If there was any chatter, I didn't feel it, and I certainly don't see the result. Now, we'll take each pair one at a time. Let's start with the spruce. I'm going to feel the surfaces first with my finger, and then with a piece of cheesecloth to see if I can detect any snags. Now, I can tell you that the Raleigh surface is distinctly smoother. This is the poplar. First with my finger, and then with the cheesecloth, the rally surface is, once again, smoother. This is the cherry. They're very close. The rally surface might be a little smoother. This is the oak. Now, on this particular wood, the rally surface, and you can see it grabbed there, turned out much rougher. I don't know if this was because this was open grained, but that's the way it was. Last, we have the maple. They're pretty close, but the Raleigh is definitely smoother. One way to objectively measure the smoothness of a surface is with light diffusion. Smooth surfaces bounce the light. Rough surfaces scatter it. The smoother the surface, the less of the diffusion. So, we took a precision laser beam and mounted it on a jig to project the light at a consistent angle and distance, bouncing it off the wood and onto this small projection screen. Perhaps not as scientific as one could wish for, but close enough to give you an objective way to compare. Raleigh on the right, Stanley on the left. Spruce, poplar, cherry, white oak, and rock maple. Whether we're being subjective or objective, I think you can see that the performance of the Raleigh is very close to that of the Stanley. In fact, in my estimation, on three species, the spruce, the poplar, and the maple, it exceeds it slightly. Now that we have some idea of how the Raleigh performs in comparison with the Stanley, Let's take a look at how it works. Let's start with that disposable knife. How easy is it to change? Lift the lock down and rotate it forwards. Rotate the depth cut lever backwards. Lift up on the knife holder, separate the back plate from the chip breaker, and remove the old knife. Then get a new one. Note that these knives have punch outs and notches to ensure that you get them properly positioned. And each knife has two cutting edges. When you wear out one edge, just flip the knife edge for edge. Quick tip. When you change the knives, make sure that there is some resistance when you push down on the depth of cut lever. If it's loose, then you probably haven't got the lock down tight enough. Additionally, these knives come in both steel and carbide. If you wish, you can use the steel for softwoods and the carbide for hardwoods to extend the life of the cutting edges. But I found the steel does just as well cutting hardwoods as the carbide. The edge may not last as long, but it's plenty sharp. How long does one edge last? Well, I can't tell you that because I haven't worn one out yet. But what I can tell you is that I used one edge of the steel knife that this thing came with for several weeks, maybe two or three hours of hand planing all total, and it was still serviceable. 
And while we're on the subjects of knives, I want to mention that the corners of the Raleigh knives are rounded. The roundover has a very small radius, but this prevents the knives from leaving steps or hard lines in the surfaces. Good thinking. Let's take a look at how you adjust the Raleigh knives compared to the Stanley iron. To increase the depth of cut, push down on the red lever. To reduce it, pull back. On a Stanley, you turn a large knob under the frog. The threads on the knob have some slop or lash, so you usually have to retract the iron and then lower it to the desired depth of cut to take up the lash. There's a great deal less lash on the lever, but I recommend you follow the same procedure to take up what little lash there is. To position the chip breaker on the Stanley, you remove the iron from the frog, loosen a big machine screw, slide the chip breaker where you want it, and tighten the screw. It's a great deal simpler and more precise on the rally. You just turn the eccentric roller forward to advance the chip breaker and roll it back to retract it. You'll note that I am using my bottle opener. Adjusting the mouth opening is the one procedure that seems to take more time and is less precise on the rally than it is on the Stanley. With the Stanley, you remove the iron, loosen the bolts that hold down the frog, and turn the frog adjustment screw. Then put everything back together. On the rally, you have to loosen four machine screws with the miniature bottle opener, slide the front portion of the plane body forward or backward, and then tighten all the screws. The plane body may or may not be cooperative. Mine was a little recalcitrant the first time. So I resorted to using a leather mallet to convince it to move. Since then, it's loosened up. Finally, there is one adjustment on the Stanley that I can't make on the Raleigh. This is the lateral adjustment lever. It tilts the iron from side to side. The knife on the Raleigh is fixed. It's parallel to the sole. Now, I don't often use my plane with the iron tilted, but on odd occasions, I have found this useful. Another thing you can't do is turn the rally into a scrub plane, as I've done here with this old number five. Craftsmen often take a plane iron and sharpen it so as to create a shallow arc across the cutting edge. This makes the depth of cut more in the middle than it is at the edges. This setup is extremely useful for removing large amounts of stock quickly. But you can't do this with the straight across rally knife. There are also times when you want to skew your entire plane body and push it forward. This effectively lowers the cutting angle and reduces the effort needed to shave the wood. This is extremely useful when planing very hard woods like this oak. I presume this would be difficult to do with the rally because the tiny ridges from the steel plates that make up the laminated plane body would bite into the wood and keep it moving straight ahead. But I was wrong. The ridges don't seem to interfere with the skew at all. Apparently, the rally engineers had the forethought to soften the edges before they laminated the plates. More good engineering. However, the ridges do leave very small indents in soft wood such as the spruce when making straight ahead cuts. You may want to actually skew the plane as you cut to prevent these, or just don't put so much pressure on the tote. And there you have it, a side-by-side -side comparison of the old with the newish, and an enumeration of the pros and cons that we have ferreted out. There's just one more comparison to make. What's the cost? As of this filming, it's about half past 2023, the Raleigh Evolution sells for about $200 US. The stripped down version, the monoblock, sells for about half that or $100 US. This is about what you might invest in a restorable Stanley and add a hawk blade. The cost of the double sided steel replacement knives are about $40 for a five pack or about $4 an edge. Carbide knives are about three times that. The long and the short of it is, is this is an effective, if non-traditional, planing solution, especially for beginners, those of us who do occasional planing, craftsmen on the go, like finished carpenters and cabinet installers. It's just possible that one day this will also be a mainstream tool. After all, metal planes like the Stanley also had a slow start. They first appeared in the 1700s, but they really didn't become commonplace until well after Leonard Bailey introduced his first bench plane design in 1867. 
Maybe what this tool needs is another Leonard Bailey that can write instructions. Whatever happens, if your goal is to plane rather than plane traditionally, then this is a superior planing tool that you may want to consider. That will help keep the videos coming. And even if you don't need hand planes, you might enjoy my book, Using Hand Tools. It's available at the Workshop Companion General Store. Please, like, subscribe, and buy to keep our planes planing and our presenter babbling. And hey, thank you for your kind attention.